Hello everyone, this is Kona, and thank you for tuning in to another TF2 commentary. Now just in case you haven't heard, last week at GDC, Val showed off some pretty cool stuff. Now public appearances like this is actually kind of rare for Val. I mean, I think the last time Val did a public announcement at a conference was last year? And it was when they were doing the uh, the steam machines and they're showing off the newest steam machine models. And the announcement only lasts like 10 minutes or something like that, it was really short. Uh, anyway, I want to talk a little about these new exciting things that Valve is planning on releasing later this year and what it could mean for TF2 and Valve's other games. First, I want to start off with the Source 2 engine, which is going to be free, by the way, for developers. So, you know, when it's officially released, I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited to see some new Source 2 games. Now, Source 2 is the next iteration of Valve's game engine. A while ago, there was a leaked screenshot on the Face Punch forums that supposedly showed a directory of games that Valve was working on, and some people think that the folders that end in underscore imported could mean that the game is being ported for Source 2. Now, this includes TF2, yay! Now keep in mind that these are just rumors, so nothing is really confirmed yet, but it's still kind of fun to talk about all these future things that Valve is doing. Now from the different videos and screenshots that I saw online from people who actually went to the GDC conference, it looks like Source 2 is mainly a back-end update. The demo that got me really excited was a video of Dota 2 running in Source 2. They showed a mob of creeps fighting at mid, which is supposed to show how the engine can handle a lot more things on screen at once. Now this says some really good things for TF2 if it's going to be ported to Source 2. And I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but back when Valve first introduced hats in 2009, the hats would actually slow down the game. Every time Valve added more hats, your FPS would drop a bit to the point where now, we have to actually use special graphics configs that go beyond the lowest in-game graphics settings just so you can get a high FPS. Of course, this highly depends on the PC that you play on, but it's no doubt that the addition of cosmetics have reduced the game's performance, and I'm hoping that Source 2 can help with this. Now at GDC, they also showed a Portal 3 demo- oh, I'm sorry, I mean a Portal VR demo. <laughs> There's no confirmed Portal 3, but you never know, right? <sighs> oh well. Anyway. Uh, in this demo, it seemed like the graphics looked a little bit better, so we can probably expect some visual upgrades with the new Source 2 engine, but I'm not sure if TF2 can fully take advantage of these graphical enhancements. Now, there's not really a technical reason for this, it's just that TF2 has a very distinct art style that's very different from Valve's other, quote, more realistic games like CSGO, Portal 2, and even Dota 2. Now, when I was making a thumbnail for a video a while back, I actually tried out a little more cinematic, realistic type of style. And when I was looking at it, I was like, huh, what if TF2 actually looked like this in-game while I was playing? Now, while I really liked it, and I'm <laughs> kind of biased here because I actually made it, so... Uh, but, you know, I kind of liked it. Uh, I feel that it still doesn't really convey the happy, casual, funny mood of TF2, you know, something that TF2 is known for. So while I welcome any graphical improvements in the next iteration, I wouldn't mind if Valve just skipped over this part and just focused on improving other parts of the game. Another major part of Source 2 is actually geared towards creators. Now Valve has said that they want to create powerful tools for content creators. Last year, they added an alpha version of the Dota 2 Workshop tools, which allowed you to easily create maps, custom maps and custom game modes. It's these kinds of easy-to-use tools that I'm really excited about, because it allows people to create things for the games that they like to play. And I'm hoping that they build tools for other games like CSGO and of course TF2. You probably heard that the recent end of the line update, which some people weren't really that pleased about, and I can understand why. It was actually supposed to come out with a map called Snowplow. It's a map and a custom game mode, but it was cut out of the update because it didn't meet Valve's high standards and it might have been a little bit too confusing to play. Now, if community content creators had more powerful tools and more flexible tools, map revisions would be done a lot faster and maybe we would see more maps and more game modes in the future. So Source 2 is looking very exciting, but that's not the only thing Valve has in store for us. VR was another big subject at GDC, and Valve, with a partnership with HTC, announced a VR headset called Vive. 
We've seen Valve support VR in TF2 already with the Oculus Rift. In fact, I recently watched a video by HiGPS where he actually shows his experiences with the Oculus Rift in TF2. I'll put a link to the video in the description so that you can check it out for yourself. It looks like a lot of fun, and even though I personally haven't tried VR in a game before, it looks like it could open up new gameplay experiences in the future. Now, there was actually something else that caught my attention more than the VR headset. It's a new technology called Lighthouse, and it's supposed to solve the very difficult challenge of tracking objects in 3D space. Now, VR headsets today do a great job of tracking your head's orientation, so basically what direction you're looking at, but not so much your head's position in 3D space. This is probably because if you use only accelerometers as your sensors, and you want to calculate position, well, you have to integrate that twice <laughs> to get position, and with the amount of noise that these sensors have, your, your calculated position is probably going to be off. Now, Valve wants to solve this problem with Lighthouse. Lighthouse is a system that externally tracks your position. It uses these boxes that are mounted in the corners of your room that emit lasers in a specific pattern. And the sensors that you have, either on the headset or in a controller, you know, these sensors pick up on this laser pattern and it can accurately track your uh, position in three-dimensional space and orientation, of course, with sub-millimeter accuracy. While this cool VR technology can help with more immersive gameplay experiences, especially in single-player games, <laughs> Half-Life 3, <laughs> I was thinking of another use for them. Now, many of you may already know about Source Filmmaker, which is Valve's 3D animation and rendering tool. In fact, that's what I use to make the thumbnails for all my videos. I was thinking, what if they took Valve's Lighthouse 3D tracking technology and made an inexpensive way to do motion capture for Source Filmmaker? You can actually do inexpensive motion capture if you have a Kinect sensor like the one for the Xbox. Now, while this does give you a good starting point, the animations can be rough and the process can be really long. Valve uses way more expensive motion tracking tools for their official Source Filmmaker movies like full body suits and high tech cameras with tracking dots. Now that kind of system can cost tens of thousands of dollars and it isn't feasible for most people so I think an inexpensive 3D tracking system for motion capture that has good integration with Source Filmmaker would be excellent for movie makers. It doesn't even have to be TF2 only, imagine people making more professional looking movies for other games like Dota 2 and CSGO. So those are some of my thoughts on Valve's GDC announcements. There were other things as well, like the new Steam controller and Steam Link, and I'm looking forward to trying all these things when it comes out later this year in November. I'll put a link in the description to some of the articles that I read so you can check it out for yourself. Valve's business model is largely based on creating powerful, easy-to-use tools for content creators to get involved with their favorite games. And while some people might be like, oh, Valve is just releasing things other people make and they take their money, you know, I really appreciate Valve putting in the time to actually make these tools and they give it to us for free. I think doing things like this helps people in the community to connect and it also keeps games going for years and years. Now my question for you guys is what are you looking forward to the most from Valve's GDC announcements like Source 2, VR, or even the Steam machines? And how do you think these things will affect the future of TF2 and Valve's other games as well? Let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.